Assalamu alaikum, Shri Darshak Pandali, and welcome to our regular weekly program, Politics and Beyond. We know that we have been doing this program for the first time. We know that our program is mainly about politics, policy, and we don't have a politician, MP, and we don't have a view. We know that our view is about mainly how politics um, can shape you and how you can shape politics. That's uh, the main ethos of this program. Today, we have a very important part of MP, um, Conservative Party. We have a very program in English. We have a lot of work in Bangla. I'm going to start with our program. 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 I'm going to start with Conservative um, All Parliament, sorry, All Parliamentary Bangladeshi Committee uh, Chair, and also a Conservative uh, MP from St Albans, and also the uh, President for the Conservative Friends of Bangladesh. So we have with us today is Anne Main, MP from St Albans. Hi Anne. Hello. How Thank are you I? for joining us. I know you're really busy. That's yes, a great pleasure. And it's it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for for making it to us. Well, it's a very show. special program. I'm pleased yeah. to be on it. Thank you. Our Shate Arachen, Apreder Shuporichito, St. Albans are um, active conservative member, Abong St. Albans are um, conservative friends of Bangladesh uh, chairman, Janab um, Tarik Bhai. Tarik Bhai, Salaam Alaikum. Thank you for m making it to, to the show. I know you're a busy man and you're coming all the way from St. Albans. It's my pleasure coming here. It's, uh, it's been great. Thank, Thank you. you. Shridhar Shukwanli, I am a very proud member of the program. I am a very proud member of the program. I am a very proud member of the program. And what we do is we do a quiz every week. So today we are going to draw one of the quiz and introduce another one. So the last quiz was what was found in Ilford in the year 1860. And it was a full... Uh, a complete remains of a mammoth, wow. the only complete remains of the mammoth, and uh, it's actually in the museum at the moment. So that's what what they found in Ilford. Um, do you want to pick the winner? I do. I want to dig really deep, so that <laughs> yeah. maybe a bit like digging out your mammoth. Yes. Right. Do you want me to read it out? Yeah, please. Oh goodness me. Rinka Chowdhury of Birmingham. All right, Birmingham. Okay. There you go. My husband comes from Birmingham. So. All right. <laughs> Rinka Chowdhury from Birmingham. After Pushkar Amra, after that, Pochhe Divo. Today, I want to quiz. One more time, you can see. You can see. You can see. You can see. The quiz for today is related to Bangladesh. One of the things that I want to say is that I want to say 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 that I want who is the current head of state, uh, sorry, who is the current uh, prime minister, not the head of state, prime minister of Bangladesh? Uh, is it Sheikh Hasina, Khaled Azia, or Roshan Eshad? Um, this, it will come up on the screen, and you will uh, send your, e uh, um, your answer or to our email address at pnb at channeleyeurope.tv. Um, I'm going to talk about the first segment, the first segment of the program. I'm going to talk about the political opinion. I'm going to talk about the guest, Anne Main, MP. I'm going to talk about the honor of the honor. And on this segment, we usually ask for a political opinion from the guest. But you're the only MP today at our guest panel. So we're going to ask you, what is, has there been something that has catched your mind and grasp your mind in the political arena in the last month or, or week that you would like to share with us and the views? Well, there's been a few things that have caught my mind. I mean, there's some quite controversial stuff going on today about whether or not members of parliament should have second jobs. <coughs> um, I actually feel quite passionately about the fact that whilst it's good a member of parliament has outside interests in keeping them informed, I think it should work 100% um, mm. for your constituents, which is what I've pledged to do when I've been an MP for St Albans. So I know it's quite controversial, so it'd be quite interesting to get some feedback on that because you know, there's two sides to that story. People say, well, it's quite nice to have a person with a business interest and, and so on, and other people say, well, if you really want to be my MP, you should be working 100% of the time. So it's, you know, it's divided opinion, so I'd quite like yeah. to hear 
from your listeners maybe let you know whether they think an MP should only work for them or maybe have some other interests. So I think that's an interesting one. That's obviously still an ongoing topic. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we're all going to be asked as candidates when we're standing, what are our mm. views? I just think there's been some really, really good news as well. I mm. mean, there's been excellent news on the economy, even in St Albans, which is a good area, you know, for jobs and things. There's been 1,800 um, extra friendships have been created. And now, now youth unemployment is just over 1%. You know, this is really great news for our young people. And, of course, great news for our older generation, which is so important this week, when we've heard that uh, they're getting protected um, winter fuel payments, protected uh, TV licences, extra, extra payments for their old age, which means now they're getting an £800 a year extra income from this government in a triple lock protection. So I think mm. there's been some really good news, for both for young people in terms of jobs and opportunities, and older people, they're keeping keeping a raft of benefits that other parties would like to stop. So I think that's sure. really good news. That's quite a bit to go through. Um, I mean, viewers, uh, you've heard, um, and we'll be, we'll, 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 the panel will be discussing about these three topics uh, in, in this segment. Hopefully, we can go through them. But we would also like to hear what your views are on these matters. Um, and has talked about the MP salary, which has uh, this week, yesterday and the day before has um, you know ruffled around the Westminster area uh, and it's mostly due with um, cash for access I believe that's where it's kind of evolved well, that's how the that's how the media is putting it but it's really the fact that quite a lot of members of Parliament do do other jobs because the hours we work are very strange yeah you know uh, still working there tonight but for example on a Monday we don't sit till 2 30 and we finish at 10 30 at night so there will be MPs who are, say, barristers or whatever, mm. who will do some work for a Outside, company yeah. or, out, or their own businesses even mm. in the morning or whatever. Now, there are people that say that brings a richness into Parliament. Mm. And I think we're going to be having a lot of discussions around at what point does it become that you're more motivated by access or cash mm. than you are by your job as a member of Parliament. But the questions that have been going on is, is basically as well, when we come out of Parliament, mm. why do people want to employ us as former members of Parliament? They mm. want to employ us because they think we know people or we're yeah. well connected. Mm. And that's that's all part of part of it. I mean, mm. you know, you sure. wouldn't have me on here <laughs> if you didn't think I kind of had some interests within Parliament that you might find interesting for your viewers. Of course, of course, um, yes. If you were the interest is there. Interest, yeah, the yeah, interest it, is, it is there. there yeah. But it's a case then of whether or not the next stage from that is is does someone pay you for that? And I mm. like to say I'm not being paid for this. It's enough. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. But, you know, we don't, we don't it's pay all anybody. Part of that. It's it's just we're, making sure that we keep our focus on what best serves the taxpayer and the constituents. And don't forget, you could have about a hundred less MPs than you've got now if our Liberal Democrat partners hadn't decided they didn't want to vote for boundary changes. Very, very topical. Because do you know what? My constituency is average, seventy-two thousand. But some constituencies are only 52,000 and some are 100,000. Mm. It's a bit like if you had a restaurant, you know, and you were serving 100 people, 50 people, 200 people, mm. but you're only getting so many in. Sure, sure. So, you know, that, again, is another thing. Should we have the boundary changes? Should we get rid of some MPs? I think we should. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you um, for sharing that. Viewers, if you have any opinion on this matter, do call us in. Um, Tariq Bay, MPs pay. Do you think that it should be, uh, they should not have a second job. Um, you know, as a person like you who are, you know, earning millions in, 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 a, in a year, in a year, I mean, uh, you would never want to go for an MP job which only pays 65,000, would you? Um, well, MP is someone who uh, enjoys the job that they do. Uh, not everybody wants to become an MP and it's going to happen overnight. It's something that people get involved in politics for a long time and then they decide to take on that position. And it, and, uh, uh, thank you. Just hold your thought because we've just got a caller. So let's take the caller and then we'll come back to you. Salaam alaikum caller. Hello, yes. Can I speak to English? Yes, sure, English? sure. Can you let me know what your name yeah. is? It's my name is Ali Haydar. Uh, yes. It's calling from South Shield. Yes, Ali Bay from South Shields. What is your opinion? My opinion to uh, my question to Anne May. Yes. She uh, honorable MP at the Centre Bones, which is very pleased. She is always in Bangladesh community, keeping touch. Thank you very much to her. I'd like to question about Bangladesh, which is she always 
go to Bangladesh and uh, more likely she get on with Bangladesh community especially. So I like to question her, please. Sure. You're, you you can pose the so, question. She's here. I'm she's listening, I'm she's listening. listening to you. Oh, she's listening. That's yes. Yes. Good. She's very. Yeah. What my question is recently Bangladesh, uh, which is uh, politically getting worse, people not safe down there. So I like to know from your mouth of words, have you got any concern about British government? They're doing any roles? Are they doing anything with communicate with Bangladesh government? That's my question, please. Thank you, thank you, Ali Bay from South Shields. Basically, I think what he's saying yeah. is, um, is there an agenda to get the parties sitting together and how you can help in the process? Well, I, had, um, I was chairing the all-party parliamentary group today and the High Commissioner, His Excellency, was there. And one of the things I actually raised with him was I'd had an answer back to a letter I wrote to Hugo Swire, who is the Secretary of State, who's, whose role is, is to look after Bangladesh, saying there was concerns, exactly the concerns that you've raised today, about political unrest, um, violent episodes that are you know, causing a great deal of distress and harm to people, and what more could be done to get political parties to work together. And his response was he was concerned, and his phrase was about the narrowing of the political space, meaning that it's very difficult now for people to express their views mm. in a peaceful manner, and as the High Commissioner observed, and it's a sad truth, there has never been an election in Bangladesh that hasn't had bloodshed or violence. Mm. And that is a very, very sad thing. So, you know, the, the parliamentary group today was saying anything we can do to help the political parties find some common purpose for the, for the good of Bangladesh, um, so much the better. And we value hugely the secular role that is played in Bangladesh. Um, and it, and it, its role in the world is enormously important, but to the outside world, it's a very, very sad thing that the two major political parties, the BMP and uh, the Awami League, cannot find any common ground. I mean, in, in, in Westminster, w the parties come in, we will argue, we will have differences, but the two parties hold each other to account. And that is the role of an opposition. And if they're not participating for whatever reason, then the government doesn't have that critical element keeping an eye on what it's doing. So it's very, very sad. Mm. In Westminster, we ha have had lots of conferences with Lord, Lord Avebury, where we actually have had leading members of the BMP, leading members of the Awami League come in. And in the neutral position of Westminster, they can talk around a table, they disagree, but it's nobody's throwing chairs or anything at anybody. Everybody's mm -hmm. agreeing to be able to discuss the points of difference. It's just a shame that outside they can't seem to take that back into the Bangladeshi you Parliament. Have, sorry, you have done that before as well. Yeah, I have I done mean, that. Yes, so I, I, I have done. I mean, I was aware that there was one conference that was in central London. I can't mm. remember where now. And the chairs ended up being thrown and the police being called. Mm. The, you know, mm. this has got to stop. stop. It's yeah. got to stop for the good of the Bangladeshi people. And really uh, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss Bangladesh more wide away in the next segment because we've well, got I agendas for it. The, the, um, if we. The, the viewer got his answer. Yeah. Um, if we come back to our uh, discussion on yes, the on the um, on the MP's pay, I mean, as I was saying, that you know, someone like you who's who's making enough, or you know, uh, there are people out there that are doing a good, handsome income, they wouldn't want to go to the parliament to do, you know, uh, a sixty-five thousand pound job and no, then um, getting shouted at um, by I, constituencies. The, can I say it in Bengali? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm on my key. Actually. যারা এমপি হয় তাদের কিন্তু আসলে লাইফস্টাইলটা এমন হয়ে যায় আসলে ওদের সময় থাকে না সো বেসিক্যালি দে আর ডেডিকেটেড টু देयर কনস্টিটিউয়েন্সি ডেডিকেটেড টু দি দি টু দি পিপল অফ দা কান্ট্রি আর সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমার মনে হয় যে যে স্যালারিটা এটা ইট নিডস টু বি ইমপ্রুভড আমার মনে হয় যে এটা ইনক্রিজ হওয়ার প্রয়োজন তারপরও পার্লামেন্টে যারা আছে তারা ভালো বোঝে এটা কিন্তু আমার মনে হয় এটা ইনক্রিজ হওয়ার প্রয়োজন আছে আর না হলে তাদেরকে সেকেন্ড জব যাতে করতে পারে সে এটা দেওয়া উচিত কারণ একজন প্রফেশন সে হয়তো বা লয়ার থাকতে পারে মেবি ইজ এ ডাক্তার তো তার প্রফেশনটা ছেড়ে যখন সেখানে আসে তার ইনকামটা অনেক কমে যায় সত্যি কথা যেটা তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে যদি যেহেতু পার্লামেন্টের সেটা মেক আপ করতে পারবে না হ্যাঁ তো সেই ক্ষেত্রে আমার মনে হয় যে সেকেন্ড জব আমার মনে হয় 
then they should be allowed to do their second job. So at least that will cover. Plus, they keep their profession because um, mm. so it could be five years, could be ten years. And then once they leave, what mm. they do? But career so. politicians like Jack Straw has been there for 40 odd years. Mm -hmm. Rifkin's been 40 odd years. So they're probably taking their pension with them. So do they really need another job? Even if they wanted to do another job, they probably wouldn't be able to do it because of their age limit. Unless it's like a professional as in, you know, lawyer or, 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 or medicine or something else, you know. Well, I, I've always made a point in my political career never talking about individuals. I just don't, I just think it's up to individuals to make their own decisions. But you know, when you have got really well respected, excellent service, and that both men have given those over the years, mm -hmm. it, this, is, this is really a difficult conundrum yeah. to sort now. And you know, th things are being looked at and investigated. But there are going to be a lot of members of parliament who are going to say, probably like Tarek just said, um, do I need this? Do, do I need this? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know where the, where the balance has got to lie and I think it's something we really need to talk mm, about. Talk about yes. Because if you are in a high powered job such as you know, being a doctor or a judge or a lawyer, mm. or, you are going to take a big drop in your salary. Mm. And so if, if you are going to say, I want to do public service, I want to get involved in shaping my country, mm. can I afford to do this? Otherwise we're going to have a problem. We may end up Parliament is stuffed full of very wealthy people mm. who don't need to work hardly at all. Yeah. Or may yeah. have a family business that's just paying, mm. you know, their sure. inherited sure. wealth sure. or whatever. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. It's gonna be a difficult decision and I think the public really needs to decide this, yeah. not the politicians. I mean it, it is it is a, a fine tuning where you where you can as you said, where you can where where can you find the balance? Because if you have somebody that doesn't have the proper knowledge of 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 the ethics and the, and the work in Parliament, then what happens is the quality will slip, and you won't be able to give a quali quality work to back to your constituencies. So that also needs to be looked at. So just saying that you know, at the first time, if MPs get salary, if, if a bit more salary, everybody's up in arms. No, nobody wants to do. Nobody it. wants, and then they can't do another job, and then you know, obviously, you are then opening up for for these members to do all sorts, to have a bit more income. So there needs to be a, a, a balance, balance where, where, they, where they can do and, it. And, and depending on your seat, if you're in a safe seat, and I know no seat is a safe mm. seat, exactly safe, but you know, if you've got a big majority, you probably know you're gonna be there for as many years as you want to be. Or if you're in a very marginal seat, or a seat that changes hands regularly, mm. you may be, I know we've got fixed term parliaments now, but we didn't, you may be in for three years, out, okay. out again, and you've literally <coughs> overnight, mm. there's no, you know, we know you're going to be made redundant and you can plan for it. And you may have moved your entire life to be in your area. Sure. So these are difficult decisions and I really wish the public so it's, would it's start mainly, talking about it more. Well, it's mainly for those who are really passionate within politics and policies and, and getting and doing things for, for the people. You can pay the bills with passion. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it, Starting yeah guys, we're we're, we're going to go on a break, but in yeah. 30 seconds, I mean, if yeah. we wrap up on on this, the MPs pay. I think, I, I personally think that um, it does not, not need to be talked about, not needs to, I mean, you get people's opinions, um, the politicians' opinions, and I think we can come out with something that will work. Okay. Um, Hopefully we will. I'm a political opinion MP their patient on the Alap Kurlam. I'm a total breaker, Jati, breaker Poresha, I'm a Bangladesh, I'm a Rana Plaza show on the Alap Kurlam. Uh, thank you for staying with us and those who have joined just now with us, welcome to our show. Uh, before I go into our um, uh, second uh, segment, which will be talking about Bangladesh and the Rana Plaza, um, I just want to remind you about our quiz uh, for today, uh, which is, who is the current Prime Minister in Bangladesh? 
Sheikh Hasina, Kaledazia, or Rosh Hashanah. You will see it'll come up on our uh, screen on the scroll, and the answer you need to send to uh, you need to send the answer to our email address, which is pnb at channeleyeurope.tv. Um, and we're going to talk about Bangladesh and Rana Plaza. Um, obviously, you being the chair for the All Parliamentary uh, Committee of Bangladesh, you have a keen interest in Bangladesh. Not only that, you're, you're also the president for the Conservative Friends of Bangladesh. Um, and uh, you have been to Bangladesh a few times. Six. Six times. <laughs> Um, I haven't been there that many times, to be honest really? with you. So That's what you're doing. <laughs> you've done. You've That's done. What your daughter you've, said to me today. You've, you've done better. <laughs> you've done better. And um, um, you've also done a piece of work on Rana Plaza when yes. it came down. We would like to hear what, why did you focus on 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 having a Rana Plaza uh, um, report and the recommendations. What made you think of that? Well, it's. Because I was absolutely shocked that people had been sent back into that factory. Um, people felt they, they had to go back in and work, and that the factory collapsed, not because of the rates of pay they were being paid to work, but it was actually the factory was totally unsafe. And it made me start thinking, and those were supplying garments to our high street stores. You know, th these could well be garments that all of us in our families had bought, um, not knowing that workers were working in a dreadful set of conditions. So I wanted to go over there, find out, whether or not this was typical, or whether or not it was a one-off, and if it was typical, what could the government do, and what, how could our country help the government stop the fact that people were making clothes for sale in the UK that were being made in factories that were death traps, and mm. that's what we did it. And we went over there, and uh, you know, 2013, April, so it's nearly two years now that that building collapsed. And of course, there's been other fires and things like the Tazreen fire. You know, there has been mm -hmm. other disasters. It's not just stopped. But at least I've been able to find out progress has been made because the light of the world has been put on Bangladesh and they don't need to lose that valuable garment trade. Mm. But then we don't need to buy garments that have been made by workers who are working in very unsafe conditions. Mm. Tariq Bhai, I mean, the Rana Plaza incident was a, was a disaster, wasn't it? And, and then as Anne said, the, the other building that had a fire in it. Um, it's, it's not only about you know, when you, when you look at these kind of disasters in Bangladesh, it's not only about Rana Plaza or another factory. It, it, it's also in, in residential areas, in offices, where there's, you know, these things are happening. It's just on a smaller scale, but these things are happening. I think, um, I think, I think, I think, I হওয়ার কোনো কারণ ছিল না যদি সবকিছু সিস্টেম্যাটিক ভাবে করা হতো হ্যাঁ সেফটি প্রকাশনটা যদি ঠিকমতো না হতো না হতো এবং আমরা যেটা দেখলাম যে ওখানে ইন্সপেক্টর ইন্সপেকশন করে ওরা দেখলো যে যেহেতু এটা একটা ডेंजर হ্যাঁ এটা ক্লাপস হতে পারে সেই জায়গায় দেখা গেল যে আবার দুর্নীতি করে আবার ওখানে লোক ঢুকায় সো আনফরচুনেটলি যেটা হয়ে গেছে এখন যেটা দরকার যে সরকার এটা এখানে বিশাল একটা পার্ট প্লে করতে পারে সেটা হলো যে এই সাততলা আটতলা ছয়তলা বিল্ডিং এর উপরে এফেক্টরগুলো না করে সেগুলো এখান থেকে সরিয়ে নেওয়া উচিত হ্যাঁ এবং ফ্ল্যাট সার্ভিসে যদি বিল্ডিংগুলো হয় দেন ইট উইল বি মোর সেফার দ্যান হ্যাভিং এ সেভেন স্টোরি হাই রাইজ বিল্ডিং ওয়্যার দ্য এফেক্টরিজ ইয়া বাট দ্যাট অলসো দ্যাট দ্যাট ওয়াজ কনভার্টেড ফ্রম আ বিল্ডিং দ্যাট ওয়াজন্ট মেন্ট টু বি এ ফ্যাক্টরি এন্ড দেন ইউ হ্যাড জেনারেটরস I think it was up to it was permitted up to four five floors then he extended to another seven. three floors yeah, seven seven floor. so so that's what what the main so the, the structure didn't able to cope with yeah, it but it's but the building inspections yeah. that's it's, it, it's yeah. maybe poor yeah. materials not yeah. up to standard yeah. used yeah. And, and just the fact that when the cracks appeared, that was the warning sign. Yeah, a lot and of people wanted to come out, didn't did. it? And they, they were forced they were to go forced back to in. Stay. Yeah. Forced yeah. to yeah. stay in. And, and no fire escapes, no way of getting out. But I think it, it's, it's a step the garments industry have to take. Mm. Yeah. Um, they've got to improve. Car uh, so the owners, yeah, of, the owners, the, of, the, of, owners of the have to be. Um, you see, like in this country, they have to we take some ownership. Business, yeah. And I abide by the law. Yeah. Now, health and safety is a big issue, and we do make sure we yeah. implement uh, uh, the, the procedure that is um, given to us. Mm. And it's every business. There's European law that we have to follow. Um, 
health and hygiene we have to follow. Karan, apne, so, eje, eh, chale mera jara ashche, tara kisu ekta poisha income kora bap mare khawan aur jono bhaiya kajon. Kino tara ashne ekhane mara jao aur jono. No, of course so, not. Uh, eta, the most people, the, the the people who works in government industry, you'll find they are uh, really uh, poor people who works in that kind of environment. Mm. You won't get uh, someone who earns uh, 50 grand, uh, 50,000 taka a month. Uh, to situation work, 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 work. They will not work in that kind of situation. Mm. So I think we need to be, because they are the backbone of the country. Mm. So I want to say Bangladesh government plus the industry mm. level, jeta mm. BMA, uh, jeta we apna, mm. uh, uh, government sector, mm -hmm. they need to take the initiative. They have mm. to work in it. Mm. Um, Working condition to improve korte hobe. Diti wala halo je building gola jo dekhte ke shoriye ne wajay. So taole mainly in Dhaka. Why does it have to be in Dhaka? Why does it have to be in in close area where there is a um, you know uh, like uh, housing and, and things? Why not is move to an uh, area where there can be a big uh, infrastructure, infrastructure mm. where everything will be safe. They have the industrial open. zones, but uh, they you know. But they're not taking them into into those those areas well, they, at the moment. It's just the people who have a bit of land. They're just doing it on on that land to cost cut. Businesses have yeah. said that to me. And and yeah. if they want to invest, they can. In, they were saying this is the big worry. They can go to other countries where the roads are in place, the the, the electricity is in place, mm. the water and services is in place, and they can just put their factories down. Whereas you go, mm. as you know, it, you mm. go to Dhaka, and and you see. Buildings that have got all these big ropes of wires running up the outside, you mm. get power outages. You know, this is, something's got to be it's tackled. Got to be, it's it's, 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 it's got, mean, got to be changed. I mean, um, I mean we're the attitude on that sector has yeah. got to be changed. Because Bangladesh is getting a huge amount of revenue yes, from, from that, that industry. Mm. As a businessman, uh, I can see, especially with the situation at this moment, people are losing millions at the moment. Um, but they could lose. They could lose a huge amount of revenue. I mean, the government will lose a huge mm. amount of revenue. So the government needs to look into that kind in the sector. How can they improve? Um, mm. their system to improve. their investors. So the owners have to take some ownership. Yes. Uh, it's not only the government, but the owners also. Well, the High Commissioner take... told me today that there's 250 factories that have been closed down. And there's about 5,000 factories in Bangladesh, and over half of those have had inspections. And it's, it's about what you said about going up to the seventh floor mm. when it had permission for four. Mm. Keeping records of what the planning permission is. I mm. mean, I'm sure you've seen those mm. steel rods that stick out the top of yeah. buildings, just waiting for someone to put someone two, three, four more. Yeah. You know, so they've got to have, the planning permissions have got to be kept. Mm. They've got to have better inspections of the building quality so mm. that the foundations are the correct depths. Mm. Again, in the Rana Plaza, they only had steel around the outside, so they collapsed like a pack of cards. Mm. There was no reinforcing steels. Mm. And it's a lot of things. And the government, to be fair, there has been a lot of assistance gone over, and they've had to take account of a lot of the criticisms. Mm. And I believe the government in Bangladesh is really trying to make a difference to mm. the situation and is really trying to push forward. And the compact that was agreed since, with Europe has acknowledged that. Since, since you've done the report and you had about approximately 20 recommendations, how many of them actually do you think that over three years has been implemented or they're working on? Um, definitely uh, the, the inspection regime. Uh, when I was over there, we went to see Buet, which is the engineering... Um, yes, uh, the uh, university. That's right. Yeah. Um, they said they just didn't have enough people to do the inspections. And so now there's been a lot of training up paid for by European money and paid for by British money. So the inspection regime has been has gone up. Uh, there's been legislation passed to improve workers' rights, which, good, I, I hope it's working. Mm. I haven't been able to see that yet. Uh, they have closed down the worst factories, and there are other factories that have had temporary closures for improvements. Mm. So I do think there has been uh, some, some, a lot of progress made. But the fire services, the fire services said to me they just didn't have enough equipment. Mm. So if you're up at a high building, they just physically can't get you out. Yeah. You know, so they, they, are, they apparently have relaxed a tax, tax on goods coming in <coughs> for sort of fire safety issues. The companies that deal in these have got together for inspection regimes. So you're not having Next and Primark and Asda, everybody doing their own inspection regimes. They're starting to come together because some of the factories were saying, we've got inspection fatigue, you know, they're coming mm. all the time. So they need to have a proper system. And, and I really do believe mm. they will move forward. It's been a big shock to them. I think they've realized yes. mm. the world has been very, very unhappy mm. to see 
some of the bad practices that go on and now some of the good ones are going on. Mm. And don't forget, I mean, you, you know, I'm not telling you what you don't know. Bangladesh is on an earthquake zone. I mean, mm. I had an earthquake one time when I was over there. No buildings in Bangladesh are earthquake proof. Yeah. Uh, you know, so if the tourism trade is to be grown, these extra structures and securities need to As far to as my knowledge goes, they do uh, work up to eight rector scale so that it doesn't, but again, how much of the inspection has gone through to, to prevent, to make sure that it is yeah. under eight rector scale? It's, 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 to, it's more to commercial buildings yeah. where uh, they need to look in. Um, residential, again, um, I think people are more, more careful than commercial because residential people worry about themselves, their lives. So they do, you know, go yeah. to a certain Life extent. Life is cheap yeah. over there, um, sadly. Mm. It shouldn't be like that. No. It shouldn't be like that. Um, our government should, Shorkar among Kotipuko Jarache, they need to look into this. Among, it is improving. I'm Rasha Kuri, it is improving. The buyers. I just asked her up there. A um, uh, and jeta bollo je passenger factory mm -hmm. mode, Alisha factory has been closed down. Then that, so ita to because of these regulations, not the place asking only bondo hito na. Then le ani ke kormo shangstan. Ita the key for me. Jamon dhoren jara ekhane bepsha kore chhe, jada mona fa achhe, jara mona kore there is a profitable business. Tara kintu ekhane shimito tak bena. Ita bondo hoye chhe, tara kintu ekhane bhalo ekta jagay ki abar bepsha korbe. As a businessman, uh, I see that as well. Hmm. If I if I know that I cannot do a business in in that area, or because of there's just a problem, I'll just move on. I'll move on. I'll yeah. go somewhere else and find a better place where I can do hmm. my business. So eti hobe. Akhon jetho eta strict jodi hoye jai, then people will have no choice but to find an alternative hmm. place. And eti hobe ora onno jagai gye bhalo ekta jekhane apna shasto abong safety profession diye jekhane ekta company korte pare, ba factory open korte pare. So I think we are going in the right direction. But it will probably take a little time. Yeah. But I think the, it's the a lesson that we learned from Rana Plaza. Yeah, but yeah. Professor Yunus suggested, so that we as consumers in the West, Professor Yunus suggested maybe having some sort of mark on the labeling hmm. so that you know it's been brought from a factory where- Fair trade marks. Fair trade, a fair trade yeah. mark. Yeah. Very like the tractor mark or a kite yeah. mark. That's right. So people know. And, and that is something that was recommended in our report. The consumer can vote with their feet. Mm -hmm. If they think that there is a young girl who's been abused because yeah. she's been made to work in dreadful conditions, and many of the workers are women, then they can choose not to buy those garments. And then big companies won't trade with those factories. Mm -hmm. And that, that is where the That leads to my is. other question that, you know, all these big companies, some of them, they wanted to pull out. They didn't want to do business. Yeah. But the governments of UK and US put in pressure that, no, you have to go. You have to go in and, and keep on doing buying and working, or otherwise a whole sector will, yeah, will yeah, well, diminish. Right. So that was, a, that was a good effort for, for the government to, to, to do. Well, America put sanctions on, which, you know, yeah. wasn't the most helpful thing to do. Yeah. But I, I do think that staying with the industry and working with it is the thing to do, but then the industry's got to change. That's right. Yeah. They're not going to wait forever for this. I changes. don't think the, the answer is not just uh, avoid and move away. Yeah. No. It's not the answer. Because as you said, um, as businessmen would move from one place to another, yeah. so the consumer, if they, don't, if they don't, can't find it in the right manner from Bangladesh, they might go yeah, to Vietnam, they might go to you know, Burma, so they the, might move on. Of course. And in fact, because of competition, uh, the garment industry in Bangladesh, they will have to improve. Um, because they know that if they don't follow the rules and the regulation, then obviously uh, they have to close. Mm. And I don't think any businessman uh, who wants to do that. So I think it's just a matter of time. Um, the, the sector is going in the right direction. The government is taking the initiative. Yeah. And, and I want to say, UK, we, we play a big part. Because there's a lot of companies uh, UK companies are are actually mm. uh, uh, actually been doing business with Bangladesh. Mm. So Shekhane, uh, what Ann did, Ann to a to play part play mm -hmm. mm. uh, She is a committee to gora holo by ita niye ita investigation kolo because she's been into Bangladesh. Where I think that's the go. only report so, uh, between the Western worlds that you actually have yeah. on 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 it the is. garment sector yes. and Rana Plaza. So nobody else did no, it. So no, no. so that was a good piece of work. It's yes. a good piece yeah. of work and, yeah. and the recommendations that came out of it were picked up by the government and we're now using that to say, like I did today, okay, where are you on this checklist? Um so mm. the High Commissioner. And they're taking it seriously. I mean the the report was quite hard hitting in mm. places. Uh, it, it really was. We accept 
that you can't put everything right all together. And we accept that you're not going to change overnight, but things have to be shown to be done the right way. Mm. Because otherwise, why is it um, England going to be the biggest uh, donor to Bangladesh mm. if it doesn't see that Bangladesh is treating its workers fairly? And, yeah, and I think that seriously. message has really yeah. got through, which is good. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, what's the future in, in, the, in the garments? I mean, do you think that it's going to expand or for all this reason it's going to contract? What, what, what do you see in future in, in Bangladesh, in the garment sector? I actually think it's going to expand and I think seeing the quality of the garments that are being produced. I, I went in a sweatshop, I went in a medium factory and I went in an excellent factory. The sweatshops are always going to exist. They're the ones that don't get inspected, and they're going to exist because they supply the internal market. Mm. The factories that are supplying the European market yeah. and the international market, they're the ones that are pulling Bangladesh up into the big league. Mm. I mean, no disrespect, but the, the reputation for the quality of clothes in the past was bad. Now the quality is really good, mm. and people will be surprised to know that these are top marks mm. as well as your, your mm. lower budget ones. These, these mm. are really, really good. And I think Bangladesh will move forward and actually will become a world leader in fashion. And I went to the first um, single country expo about four years yeah, ago. Yeah, do you remember that? They do it every, every yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. And the fashion show there, and the clothes were brilliant. Did the BBC cover it? No. 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 It wasn't covered. Yeah. You wouldn't have known it happened. I yeah. went and I thought, this is fabulous. Yeah. They do it every year. But I think, I think they've they got potential. Uh, the country is thriving. Yeah. Uh, the economy is getting better. Uh, I mean, we look back 40 years, and we look now, a lot has changed, yeah. um, even though we have unrest, political unrest. But I think things will improve. Um, but the business that we are talking about just now, I think it is improving. Mm. The, uh, um, the, f the foreign investors are moving in. They are investing a huge amount of money in Bangladesh. Government sector is getting expanding, and it will expand. Mm. And I think, I don't think, I'm not going to worry about this. This is a factory that is closed. They will open again. It our open hobby. Mm. They will open again because once they know they're losing money, they will definitely find a better mm. place mm. and they will reopen again. So that's not worrying. But I think it's expanding and it will expand because we have a huge uh, uh, labor market in Bangladesh. So, it is a Bangladesh improvement. It is a generation. It is a generation. It is a gap. It is a new generation. It is a so we have to get this generation into work. Of course, of course. And they are the get one them aware of the it, yeah. In the next two, three years, do you think that um, most of all, all of your recommendations will be will be adapted in Bangladesh? And would you, if you know, after the election, would do you perceive? doing a review on this report, we've going already, back and... We've already talked about it. Okay. We, we, we said we would like to go back after the general election in the UK. Mm. Um, I particularly like to look at the role of women, because one of the things we, we learned a lot about over there was um, the, a lot of the women felt they couldn't speak up and weren't empowered mm. enough. Mm. And so the, gov uh, the, uh, the High Commission says there's been new labour relations and laws put in place to protect the rights of workers mm. and the rights of women. I think we'd like to see that. Um, a big worry that and it's, came... And it's very uh, strange when you have all the leaders, women, in Bangladesh. Yeah. And then you don't have... The, the other women can't have a voice. Well, the sad thing, I mean, you mm. know, I went to the centre for the <coughs> paralysed um, and, and saw some of the people being treated there. And the sad thing is, is that some of the people who had lost limbs and whatever were, were being married off for their compensation. And young girls who'd been orphaned were being traded over mm. the border or were, were liable to be victims of a sex trade. Mm. You know, so women are still very vulnerable in Bangladesh. Mm. Um, some of them are still being stu stood by machines and not even paid, they're just helpers. They help, they're being trained. And then as soon mm. as their training period comes to the end, they're, they move, they're moved out of the factory and somebody mm. else comes in to work mm. for nothing. So there yeah. are abuses of young girls and mm. women over there. And I would particularly like to go back and see what more could be done to empower the women, you sure. know, to sort of make sure they get their rights. Views are Shunta Sanjay, Amra, Bangladesh, Shonda, Alap Kuchi, among Rana Plaza, among women's rights in Bangladesh. Shop Kisumi Lijli, Amra, a segment Alap Kutasi. If you have any views or if you have any comments, please do uh, feel free to call and ask Anne about it. Uh, so, Tarek Bai, um, it's not only the, only the uh, garment sector, but other sectors are also thriving. If you look at the fishery industry, 
the, you know, the, there's a huge market there too, isn't it? There is. Um, um, with the fishery, I mean, I can tell you a little bit about it because I, I was in Bangladesh. Unfortunately, and, uh, there has not been any dramatic disaster as, as no. it has been on, on this uh, uh, well, sector. Well, disaster, there's something um, you can't avoid. You can't yeah, avoid. Yeah. But luckily, we didn't But man-made disasters for didn't customers. really happen. Yeah. Um, but then the government um, is trying to get people into fishery business because there's a, a fund which is World Bank is funding. So quite, um, uh, I can see, I mean, I knew have, I have friends who are into getting into this business because it's a very profitable business. Mm. And we do, I mean, they do export mm. a lot of fish to UK. Remember that we, it's a huge business here. Prawns. Prawns. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, king prawn that king we prawns, use in our restaurants. Black prawns. It mm. all comes from Kulna. And uh, that's, that's a huge business. Mm. So it's business is the only way. Bangladesh has um, moving, move, they moved yeah. on. And Bangladeshis and are naturally uh, into, business into business anyway, but it's just how you, how you do that in a more subtle way and a I proper manner. And we are more conservative minded, be honest with you. Yeah, they're, small business they're owners. Business minded. <laughs> yeah. And I think we are all business, uh, business people. That's why you see in this country, 95 to 98% of the business is owned by, the restaurants are owned by Bangladeshis. <laughs> So, I mean, that proves that we are conservative. We think about our education, we think about children's education, mm -hmm. we think about better life, nice car, nice house, mm -hmm. nice business, and that's what, what, what we want. And at the same time, and you look after your workers. That's, right. and that's what we want to do, do, isn't it? Yeah, we yeah. do. We employ, I mean, in, in uh, the catering industry, we employ huge amount of people. Mm -hmm. There's you know? six billion in the UK that's alone. Right. In the UK alone. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, I mean, uh, we are employing, you know, we. We are putting a lot of money. Is it six billion the revenue company. that's coming in? So yeah, apparently it's so worth six billion. To the so UK six company. billion revenue. It's revenue. like it's that's like right. six councils, to be honest with you. Yeah, but you know, unfortunately, Tower Hamlets yeah, is about one point two two billion. Mm. It's uh, budget. So it's about six councils. Yeah, I'm going to get a little political now. <laughs> yeah. You know, the last government introduced a points-based immigration system, and the problem a lot of the, the restaurateurs are telling me, um, and I've lobbied the minister in the mm. last parliament is that we can't bring in our trained curry chefs mm. because we can't control EU immigration That's right. and people want immigration control because of pressures on housing mm. and so on. So the only immigration we can control are outside, outside the EU, the EU yeah. and it's really hitting mm. industries like That's the curry right. industry. Curry mm. It's really, and we need to reform this. Well, I'm, I'm forgetting well, that. Well, I think um, anyway, recently mm. Theresa May did say uh, she's looking at how to improve things. So the immigration, I think we're going to be uh, after election, there's going to be a lot of change coming in. It's better. Positive change. Positive change. Yes, yeah. well, we, we going to be need. A lot of positive we need They will probably people. make it easier for people mm. um, instead of going through a uh, lot of different sections, applying for different kind of visas and all that. So what they're trying to do, combined into something simple, mm. people who are really uh, are um, legit, people who wants to come in for mm. right reason, they will be allowed to come mm. into this country. Thank you, Tariq Bay. Thank you, uh, Anne. We're going to go into the um, third segment in a minute. Shri Darshamurli, Apra Shunlen, on a positive note that um, if they come back in in the next uh, parliament, it will be all positive. Uh, so if you do agree to that, uh, do call in the next segment because that's exactly what we're going to talk about, uh, about UK. Shri Darshamurli, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to Thank you. I want to say that the last segment is the last segment. The last segment is the last segment. The last segment is the last segment. The তারাকে আমি আমাদের যে কুইজ সেটা আবার আপনাদেরকে রিমাইন্ড করে দিচ্ছি আপনারা আমাদের পর্দায় দেখবেন একটু পরে নিচে আসবে স্ক্রল হবে সেটা হচ্ছে আমাদের বাংলাদেশের প্রাইম মিনিস্টার বর্তমানে কে শেখ হাসিনা খালেদা জিয়া 
ও রশনের স্বাদ নিচে আপনারা দেখবেন যে সাদা স্ক্রিনের স্কুলের মধ্যে এই কোশ্চেনটা আসবে এবং আপনারা আমাদের আপনাদের উত্তরটা পাঠিয়ে দেবেন আমাদের ইমেল অ্যাড্রেসে সেটা হচ্ছে pnb@channelieurope.tv নাও we're going to go into our third and final segment and and we're going to talk about uh, Bangladesh is in UK mm. and um, you've been a good friend and um, have been around with the Bangladeshi community for a long time you have set up the conservative friends of Bangladesh and um, we would like to know that how that has played a role in politics and in people's life and a bit about your constituency that you know how how you've how you're managing with all these yeah, yeah. balls in your hand, <laughs> how you're juggling, you know. Well, it, I mean, I set it up in 2005, and um, it, the, the aim was that I realised that the Conservative Party didn't really have a direct dialogue with the Bangladeshi community. And yet, as Tariq observed earlier on, you know, um, I, I see the Bangladeshi community as conservative with a small c, definitely. You know, they value their family, they vary, value their businesses, they value aspiration and education and getting on. They respect older people, they, 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 they have hopes for their young people, they're business owners. So to me, these are a lot of values that I share as a conservative. And I thought, you know what, this is a community that doesn't have a voice as strong as I would like it with other main parties in the, in the country. So the Conservative Party didn't have that role, so I set it up. It's grown. Um, I'm pleased to say Tarek is a prominent member in Hertfordshire <laughs> and doing a sterling job. But it actually means now that there is a choice. It used to be taken for granted that Labour had the Bangladeshi vote. And I think they've taken them for granted. Mm. And I don't think they've always thought which policies are important to the Bangladeshi mm. community. For me, I have about 5,000 uh, Bangladeshis in, in St Albans. Uh, we're twinned with Salet. It, it's, a, it's a passionate community that gets on very well with the whole of St Albans. And I, I'm really, really keen to make sure they've got a strong voice. And I know in other areas like um, Tower Hamlets, you know, there's large Bangladeshi communities. They are not a Labour vote. They are a British Bangladeshi vote. And they have choices for their families that I think we have a lot mm. to offer as Conservatives. So this is something I've been doing. And I, I like to think I've um, given a strong voice. But you, you, you say that, you know, um, that Bang Bangladeshis are um, naturally conservative. With a small C. <laughs> yeah, but, but they, the perception within the Bangladeshi community is they are more aligned with Labour. How do you overcome that through, through, through dialogue or through, through CFOB? Well, well, both of those things. And making sure, I mean, I, I had a vision, uh, Conservative Friends of Israel, has a lot of dialogue with the Conservative Party. And, and I felt that if we had a Conservative Friends of Bangladesh, we could listen to the business owners, in Bangla uh, the Bangladeshi, mm. British Bangladeshi business owners, find out what it is they need, because they're prosperous. Labour tends to think of them as people who may be in social housing, worried about benefits, not very well educated. The Bangladeshis I meet are successful, aspirational, entrepreneurial. Mm. They want a voice, they have different concerns, and I don't think Labour takes them seriously. Mm. So I just think that we, are giving them a voice. We are listening to their concerns about their businesses, whether they can get curry chefs in or whether they have problems with, um, you know, in, in, in taxes and, and uh, getting the training they need for their mm. staff. So I just think it's important that we do give them that voice. And that's something I've set up. And there's hundreds of us now, I, I believe we've got 300, 300 members, yeah. many supporters yeah. mm. across mm. the UK. So we must be doing something right. They must feel they've actually they've got a choice now. We're giving Labour a run for its money. They yeah. can't take them for granted. I think, I think, um, COFOB, when, when we started, we had a really small group. Yeah. Now it's grown. Tell you, every have... time you open your mouth, somebody's <laughs> calling. Let me take the call, <laughs> and then we'll get back to you. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Ke bolchen? Kote ke bolchen? Assalamu alaikum. I'm Ami Mohammed Najimuddin. I'd like to speak to your two of guests into the studio today. Ji, Najim Bhai, Bolin, we can hear you, and Main's here, and Tariq Bhai is here, so do uh, ask your question uh, or opinion. I'd like to, I'd like, I'd just like to one question to both of your guests today. Is, uh, the gentleman name uh, is uh, Tariq Ahmed. Yes. And the other lady is, I believe she's, her name you mentioned earlier, Amen. And Amen, yes. Yes, I heard this name very popular in constituency is uh, Central Bonds, I believe. Uh, just want to find out uh, what actually she's doing for the Bengali community, especially she mentioned earlier, the Tower Hamlets mostly vote is goes to the level, but actually we British not voting one of the particular party, which is in our own country. So 
she, she, what she's actually doing, I heard she's doing very good with the Bengali community. If she can mention one or two, what she's doing at the, in her constituency with the Bengali people, mm -hmm. uh, then we really glad to hear from her. Okay. Uh, I mean, I I ছিলেন <laughs> তো উনি যদি একটু কুলাকুলি বলেন কি করতেছেন এবং আগামীতে উনার প্ল্যান কি খুবই খুশি হব ধন্যবাদ সাউন্ডস লাইক আ কনস্টিটিউয়েন্ট ফ্রম ইওর এরিয়া হ্যাভিং আ কোশ্চেন ফর ইউ এন্ড ফর ইউ আই ক্যান গিভ ইউ থ্রি থিংস দ্যাট আই ডিড এন্ড এন্ড আই স্টিল অবভিয়াসলি ওয়ার্ক উইথ দ্য কমিউনিটি আই এম গোইং টু देयर ওপেন ডে অন দ্য ফার্স্ট অফ মার্চ ইন দ্য হ্যাপফিল্ড রোড মস্ক সো এনিবডি এলস লিসেনিং আই'ড লাভ টু সি देयर ওয়েন আই ওয়াজ ফার্স্ট অ্যাপ্রোচড ইন 2005 দ্য হ্যাপফিল্ড রোড মস্ক দ্য জামিয়া মস্ক ওয়ান্টেড টু এক্সটেন্ড had been turned down the mp at the time hadn't done anything really to help them said nothing could be done i worked with them and the planning authority we managed to get the mosque extended i managed to rewrite their planning application find them an architect who'd get it sorted out and that got passed i also helped them when they were trying to buy the other half of the mosque to get um for a, a women's room and, and a laying out area there's also another mosque in london colney that i helped um that, that had been a uh, a small former betting shop it turned out Again, I managed to work through the planning applications with them and get that passed. There's also another mosque in London Colony that's not for the Bangladeshi community particularly, but I've been working with them when they had issues. When the taxi drivers in St Albans were being asked to rebrand all their taxis into yellow and white livery, which is what St Albans wanted, I made strong representations that they could keep their red and navy and black and all the other colour cabs they like to have. And that way then St Albans changed his mind. They now no longer have to do the white and yellow livery on their taxis. Otherwise it would cost know, them so much money. I it would have cost them loads of money and completely money. having to rebrand or respray their taxis. That's right. So that saved them money. I work a lot with a lot of the Bangladeshi community because many of whom have larger families, extended families, um, to try and help them make sure they get their voices heard at uh, the local level in terms of getting um, access to housing. I can't make people give them a house, but I can make sure they get all the details and all the information and all the representation they can. Um, and I've worked as well, uh, met with and worked with the uh, Bangladeshi women in St Albans who have, um, it's called the Hertfordshire w Women's Group, where they have elderly <coughs> Bangladeshi ladies who go along and, and socialise and, and get out the house and, and so on to make sure that they get some sort of social interaction and, and they, they, they were really pleased to see me because again they hadn't really had much contact with someone other than a Labour Member of Parliament. So. I like to think I've done some positive things. I'm already been asked a gentleman on the train station and please contact me again because I gave you my card said that London Colney a group of Bangladeshis wanted to try and get together sorting themselves out with community facilities. His very words were I've asked the labor councillors they've done nothing. Um I like to think if you ask me I will take your issues very seriously and I will do whatever I can to make sure that people in St Albans get all the right access to all the right people on the council and I will help you try and get whatever it is you want to achieve achieved. Tariq bhai the caller has a question yes, for you. Yes yeah uh, first of all I'd like to say thank you for um calling um jetu ni call call korechen amaderke ha so nischoy ami bolbo ei jaygay je conservative party ashole amra jara byabsayi achi um amra jodi dekhi tahole dekha jacche je amader byabsha ekhon onek improve hocche so ইসলাম <laughs> থেকে <laughs> 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 কয়েকটা অজুহাতে 
বেঙ্গলিন as a foreign language so you can't uh, yeah. sit in exams so what is your thought on that hold that thought oh, while okay. i f- will i allow tarik bhai to finish off okay um let me come back to the amader uh, jeta ni amra alochona korchilam seta holo je amader future uh, plan ache jeta ayan ekhon bole bolechen je amra past ki korechi mm-hmm. she has helped mosque amader uh, masjid er jeta onek somoshya chilo setar jonno shri onek kaj korechen community er sathe onek shomoy kaj kore thaken যেমন রিসেন্টলি আমাদের অনেকে আমার কাছে আসে নানান সমস্যা নিয়ে তাদের স্পাউস সমস্যা হয়তো হইতে পারে রিসেন্টলি ওয়েট হার সার্জারি অ্যান্ড শি শি রোট লেটার ট্রাই টু হেল্প সো আন ইজ হেল্পিং এভরি ওয়ান মাসে শি ক্যান ইস দেস উইদ ইন দ্য লো ইফ ইস পসিবল শি উইল সেটা হচ্ছে যে আমরা সবসময় সাহায্য করে থাকি আর দ্বিতীয় কথা হলো যে আগামীতে আমরা যেটা করতে যাচ্ছি সেটা হলো একটা কমিউনিটি সেন্টারের জন্য যেটা আমাদের লন্ডন কলোনি থেকে একটা ইয়ে আসছে কথা বলা হচ্ছে সেটা নিয়ে আমরা চিন্তা ভাবনা করতেছি যে কমিউনি কমিউনিটিকে নিয়ে আমরা কীভাবে কী করতে পারি সো দিস ইজ সামথিং দ্যাট উই আর লুকিং অ্যাট আমাদের আরেকটা কল আসছে পার্লামেন্ট <laughs> and uh, i would like to say to our bangali community central ones you know to vote for Cons- conservative party our uh, mp anmain again you know uh, we very soon coming out for uh, um, can- canvas you know election canvas and uh, um, um, we had lots of help from anmain uh, basically um, our community and also for the mosque as well you know um, Thank the you. mosque in london colony uh, the, the struggle a lot you know Uh, to get the permission and Anmen help us with the uh, getting the permission and our uh, mosque uh, in Hatfield Road St. Albon uh, for the extension has lots of problems and she helped there as well, you know. Thank and, you. And uh, basically, uh, you know, I'd like to say to Anmen, you know, the, thanks very much to helping, helping us and we, we expect uh, to help more, help us more in the future. And I Thank hope you. Uh, we'll be elected uh, this time as well and we're coming out uh, with, with you. আগামীতে কি করব সেটা নিয়ে কথা বলতেছিলাম ইনশাল্লাহ যদি প্ল্যান সেন্ট্রাল গুন্স এর জন্য আমাদের অনেক প্ল্যান আছে সেটা হলো অনেক ইস্যু আছে যেটা নিয়ে আমরা চিন্তা ভাবনা করছি স্পেশালি বিএমই কমিউনিটি আমাদের নানা সমস্যা আছে সেগুলো নিয়ে আমরা করব এবং এই বছর লাস্ট ইয়ার আমরা যেটা একটা মেলা করতে চাচ্ছিলাম আনফর্চুনেটলি সেটা হয় নাই বাট শি ইজ স্টিল ওয়ার্কিং ভেরি হার্ড অন ইট অ্যান্ড হোপফুলি আমরা আশা করছি যে দিস ইয়ার উইল উই উইল শো আই গেট বাট last year majority council majority was conservative now it's labor i was going to come so to that it, is it isn't it a bit difficult to get things done is it conservative yeah. okay fine so so that that shows that we are doing very well in in central rules and amader arekta jinish holo jeta apni jante sachchen je amar viewers jeta jante sachchilen je amra ki dhorone help korte pari so basically amra onek onek dhorone help korte chacchi apnader jodi kono somoshya thake amader kache ashen amar sathe kotha bolen amra we are willing to help ar ditiyo kotha holo je amra community center niye ba onnano issue niye amra kaj korchi ekhon and amon hope hopefully amra agamite egula ye korbo ar ki so what is what is the makeup of the council then yeah the makeup of the council 
council, the Tories have got 29. Uh, uh, so they're, they're majority? They're, yeah, they're, they've got a majority, but just by two. Oh, right, okay. it's, it's a council that changes in thirds. So, okay. But in terms of the parliamentary seat, um, Labour are in third place now. I took the seat off Labour. Um, he, he, the gentleman, he's 71. I'm surprised he still wants to stand again. But he's, he's the, the MP that I defeated 10 years ago now. Um, and he's 11,000 votes behind. So basically, if you, if you vote Labour in St Albans, you're probably not going to get a Labour Member of Parliament. What mm. you might do is you might get a Liberal Member of Parliament, mm. and I don't know how much he gets involved with the Bangladeshi community. I don't think he does much with them. Yeah. Um, but I, I care passionately about the Bangladeshi community in St mm. Albans, and they've been very good to me, and I'm very grateful for the support I've had. You know. One of the callers had a, a question, if you briefly, because we're, we want to talk about more about your constituency, about the A-levels. Yeah, I didn't and, quite understand and the, what you meant. Was what, what, what it is, the, the, the government's uh, saying that do we need all these languages in, in our think, curriculum, in A-levels? The person was talking about um, the Bangla school which is people can take their own. Uh, there was a GCSE A-level they ah, can take. Right. Like and you can, you can I, like I sit in it's, it's, for the exam for GCSE and for the A-levels. Local council, I But think. the government apparently proposing to take, take um, funding, funding. the Bang, Bang, Bangla language away. I, I'm sure there are other languages that are victim and Bangla is one of okay. them. Okay, well, I don't so, know about that. And so now that you know. Now, well, <laughs> send me an email and okay. I'll look into it. As okay. chair as I'll put my chair hat okay. on. Um, Caller, Apne Shunlen, Amin Bhai, uh, if you send an email to Anne Main, she will definitely raise it and look into it. I want to ask a call us, call to Amin Yeni, talk to Apne Shatash Bhai. Assalamu alaikum, caller. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Well, assalamu alaikum, caller. Kya bolchen, kothi kya bolchen? Can I speak Bangla? Yes, carry on. Bangla bolen, or shi bolen? Ji, bhai, I'm asking a question. 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 So, we have to start with this. 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 Thank you, um, caller. Um, the caller is asking that there are um, a lot of these businesses that are struggling with um, with employees and stuff, yeah. especially the restaurant takeaways, and especially he's struggling with his takeaway. And he's saying, if you get re-elected in the next parliament, is there any kind of um, indication that you will do something for the people that are working under the table, undocumented, and do an earned um, kind of stimulation, uh, legal to work or give a work permit or something of that? That's his question. What, give work permits to people who are here illegally? Yeah. What kind of stimulus? Well, basically, what he's uh, trying to say, I think, I think, I think that's something that uh, uh, is, is a complex question. To yeah. with you. I think he's, he's trying to say that people who are now, there's a lot of students here, they cannot work. I think that's what he was trying to say. Possibly, um, but they're, he's they're, saying they're, they're overstayed, that's what he's yeah. saying. Some people are overstayed because of their visa run out, and mm. obviously. But I, I don't know. I mean, this is something... I mean, there are, uh, currently, there are, as far as I know, there are programs which you can apply through, through right, like yeah. 14 years I mean, and 20 years. Um, but I don't know if permit the Permit is something, I mean, again, uh, work permit is something to do with immigration law. Mm. And I think you need to, the person needs to look into this. There's a lot of lawyers out there. Um, and tier two is the, is, is the, the answer, tier two. So if you're a, a licensee, then you can get uh, uh, people are, you, know, mm. you, you can employ people, even students you can employ. Mm. It's all to do with a uh, legal side. So I think uh, the person needs to uh, talk to... Okay. Um, um, let's talk about your... Uh, we, we, we just got two minutes left. Okay. So um, we, we just want to talk about your constituency and how, you know, as I said earlier, that you have to juggle a lot of balls about you're, you're the chair for the parliamentary group and the president for the CFOB, and then your primary uh, responsibility is to your constituents. Yes. So how do you 
go about with that. And then you have to come to Parliament to vote and then go back to St Albans, yeah. you know. And obviously you've got your family life too, so... I, I, don't, I don't do anything other than, than be the MP for St Albans. I can yeah. honestly say, friends complain they don't see much of me. I don't really have any hobbies now, not anymore. <laughs> um, and I just give it 100% because I just think that's the way I should be. Mm. Um, so, you know, different people do things differently, but I get up really early. I was, you know, up at 6 o'clock this morning and I go to bed late and I'm a bit of a workaholic. So I try to give 100% to my constituents and um, I hope they feel that they get a good service. People... I've got plenty of letters that say they do, so that's, I'm going to keep working that way. That's good news. Well, yeah, I mean, we all know she's very popular, <laughs> especially with the Bangladeshi community. Uh, and all, all the community really loves her because of uh, the work she's done. Um, with, that, so with that positive note, she's... thank you, Tariq Bay, and uh, thank you, Anne. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming to our show. Shridhar Shavirli, I'm Raskar Alapkulam, St. Albans MP and Main, among our only Conservative Friends of Bangladesh President. Uh, well, at the same time, the uh, chair for uh, Bangladeshi group for all parliamentary committee in the House of Commons. Apra Shulen Unar Kotha, Abong Apra Agamita Amra Abar Notun Arijun MP Kenyajbo, Amade Shati Thaken, Abong next week, Ashakuri Ajambai Apra Deshade Thakben. Bhalo Thaken, Shusa Thaken, next week, Dakhabe.